This is BBC World News. I'm Yelda Hakim. 30 years ago, things changed for viewers of global television when the first edition of BBC World Service News was broadcast. We are now known as BBC World News, but we are still very much at your service. Lots has happened along the way, some of it shocking, some of it a bit surprising. One of uh, our long-standing and much-admired uh, presenters, David Eads, has been taking a look back at the history of the channel. Good evening, this is the BBC World Service News. I'm Ed Mitchell. The headlines tonight. The 11th of March 1991, the day the BBC took the plunge into international TV news. And what a year it turned out to be. The dissolution of the Soviet Union, the first Gulf War, the start of the Balkan conflict, not to mention IRA attacks here in London, the very first website created, and the Nobel Peace Prize, well, that went to the pro-democracy activist Aung San Suu Kyi. And that was just the start. Tonight, the Gorbachev era has at last come to an end. Hi. Nelson Odessa Mandela. Every day of every year, we've shone a light on our world, on your world. Be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. Highlighting events for the better and for the worse. Events which fundamentally changed our world. We've grown up with leaders like these. Where are you from? Uh, BBC. Here's another beauty. It's a good line. We've held them to account. No, we I'm Matthew Amrilliwala as the United States prepares for a new president. We've broken the big stories. Information disorder. Who can you trust? Sort out the truths behind them. With nearly 200,000 people now displaced by the fighting in South Sudan. Brought our own insights to bear. And while our values are permanent, our style has changed. And these latest pictures give you an idea of the scale of what's happening. BBC World News tells more of your stories through your eyes. Images witnessed and shared by you, delivered within moments to a global audience. We begin a long goodbye from our home for the last two decades here at Television Centre. And don't forget the transition to our new premises with new technology, new cameras, some with a mind of their own. Oh, hello. Well, <laughs> you've gone. <laughs> Tanya, always a pleasure to have you. Pardon me. One-off moments that only live TV news can deliver and we can never forget. <laughs> 30 years protecting and enhancing the finest reputation for impartiality. The police do not have this demonstration under control. Trust. Sao Paulo residents have been in quarantine for nearly two months now. And truth. Accusing the foreigners, including foreign media, of conspiring against Egypt, and so we have to leave. It's getting violent. That is where we have not changed. There's this extraordinary effort to stop us documenting any of it. You know, every year throws up unique challenges, none more so than this COVID year. But throughout the 90s, the noughties, the teenses and the 20s, BBC World News has been telling it like it is. So on our big birthday, from us to you, happy 30th. David Eads there. Well, let's go to Ian Richardson, who's the former news development editor from BBC World Service uh, TV. Ian, uh, good to see you. Watching that clip uh, uh, or that, that piece that David did, I feel a sense of, of huge pride. And you were really part of the initial shaping of the channel. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm honoured. Yes, uh, I think it was the proudest moment of my 27 years with the BBC when I was asked to join this project um, back in uh, 1991, although I was involved with earlier uh, pilots that were done in 1986, I think. But uh, yes, it's, uh, I'm very proud. I suppose when you're launching something like this, you do hope that it reaches uh, 30 and, and beyond. But at the time, given the media landscape is always changing and shifting, did you think that we'd get this far? Uh, we always hoped. Uh, you know, I, I 
being a journalist, uh, I don't see there's any point in writing anything or doing anything if it's not going to be seen. What is the point? Uh, and uh, I know that uh, the tomb uh, inspired uh, colleagues of mine, John Ramsland, the first editor, and uh, John Axelby, the first managing editor, uh, they, they were very, very determined people and uh, they wanted to, it to work and they made it work against all the odds. I mean, I don't know whether you realise that they were given three months to get us on air and they did it. They Fantastic. Do. Yeah, and here we are. And, you know, 10 years ago, uh, when social media w was taking the world by, by storm and we were seeing things like uh, uh, citizen journalists and, and bloggers, there really was a lot of questions swirling around the existence of things like TV news. Uh, but I suppose what the last few years has shown is, is how critical and important we are, uh, you know, in, in sort of holding uh, people accountable and for uh, providing impartial news. Well, I think that uh, one of the really driving forces came from Sir John Schuster, who was then in charge of uh, BBC uh, World Service, and uh, Chris Irwin, who was uh, brought in as managing editor. They were they were determined to wrest back the audience from CNN. I mean, it was a, a, a really shocking experience for everybody in uh, when the uh, Iraqis invaded Kuwait and everyone was turning to CNN. And uh, John Chuser and Chris Irwin and a lot of us thought, this is really bad. This is bad for BBC World Service. So something must be done about it and something was done about it. And if you look at, uh, you know, surveys that have been done uh, in the last few years, for example, in places like America, the BBC is considered the most trusted news service, especially with this whole uh, wave of uh, disinformation, misinformation that, that platforms like social media have created. Well, uh, that's true. And I, that's one of the reasons, the great reasons, why I'm so proud to have been part of the BBC, uh, because I've worked uh, elsewhere and I know that uh, uh, seeking the truth is not always uh, achieved or even desired in some organisations. But the BBC really wanted to get the truth out there and be as accurate as possible. And that's why I loved working for it. And just briefly, I mean, looking forward to the future, many countries have thriving media industries themselves. So why are we important today? Quality. I think that's it. Uh, and I think eventually people begin to realise that uh, the BBC is telling the truth uh, and in the best possible way it can. OK, on, and on that note, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much uh, for all of your work, Ian. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in the next few minutes.